Maddie Lake, member of the Young Democrats Club. Nico Montalvo, president of the Young Democrats Club. Hunter Gamble, president of the Young Republicans of Magnolia High School. Blake Clifton, vice president of the Young Republicans of Magnolia High School. Yes, I'm Charlie Riley. I'm the county commissioner here at Montgomery County Precinct 2. Now we can begin. Yeah. Mr. Riley, it seems that every opponent that you face challenges your integrity while working as, as the commissioner. Will you shine some truth to the situation as you see it to help Montgomery County citizens understand why? They should vote for you. Yeah, they should vote for you. I'm sorry, they, they should what? That they should vote for you. Why, the, why they should vote for you? You know, for the uh, over 50 plus years that I've lived in Montgomery County, my integrity was never questioned on anything I've ever done from any kind of uh, non-profit organization, any kind of event I was involved in, any kind of organization or club I was involved in. The minute I get into politics is the minute I get questioned because I ruffle some feathers because I think that uh, I didn't do what some folks or some groups wanted me to do. I didn't uh, follow their marching orders, so that's where my integrity is questioned. If you go and look at my record as uh, a human being, as a person who loves Montgomery County, as uh, given most of my life for Montgomery County, my integrity should not be questioned at all. There should not be any questions at all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, how well will you be in contact with your constituents in order to determine what is most relevant in the county? I'm going to be a whole lot more in contact than what I am right now because I'm currently trying to put together a, uh, uh, I've hired a chief of staff and I'm trying to put together a, a new website and a new way of uh, contacting people with Nextdoor, uh, Facebook. I've got that now, but I don't, I don't have a clue how to use that. And I've got too much to do to be worried about sitting behind a computer trying to uh, worry about Facebook posts or our uh, website so I'm going to get people to do that for me and we will have a, a jam up uh, website and social media campaign and and not only campaign but we'll have a jam up website and social media for our precinct to constituents at our county board where they can contact us and stay in touch with us that's that's on its way pretty quick thank you uh, commissioner Anybody who follows you understands the 249 toll road, but there are still some people that talk about the Willens Parkway extension. Uh, could you tell us exactly what if uh, anything is going on with the Willens Parkway extension? Uh, if there's anything that's going on with the Willens Parkway extension, I'm not involved in it. As I stated over and over and over, the last three years when the people uh, voted that bond issue down and, and they claimed that the Woodlands Parkway extension was the, the reason. I agree that that was one of the reasons. And the folks in the Woodlands said they didn't want it and some folks over in Magnolia still want it. I have made a uh, commitment and I'm gonna stick to that commitment that I will not spend one more nickel on Woodlands Parkway. If somebody wants to build Woodlands Parkway, it's gonna be somebody besides me. Also, the rumor is that the 249 toll road will not work without the Woodlands Parkway extension. Well, that is about as far from the truth as is anything I've ever heard in my life. Uh, 249 is going to be the biggest game changer in Montgomery County in the last hundred years. With the development, with the economical uh, retail and commercial that's coming uh, with that road, it will be. It will be the biggest game changer uh, in at least 100 years. We don't need any connector roads to make it work. Uh, what pushed you to this position rather than clerk or something similar? Well, number one, I wouldn't be a very good clerk because I don't like sitting in an office and I don't like computers and I don't like, uh, I don't want to be I can't say it. I want to be responsible for records because I am responsible for records, but I, that's not the type of job I wanted. I've always been, I've always been hands-on. I've always tried to get things done, and I can get things done in this position, and I have gotten things done. 
uh, instead of being in the office where somebody gets something done and brings it to me for me to record. I want to be the guy that's taking it to them so they can take care of that. I want to get it done let somebody else record. All right. Commissioner Riley, can you tell us why you love Montgomery County so much? I can't tell you that without tearing up, but I'll, I'll try. You know, I, I, I've told this story, I, I guess, a hundred times. You know, I grew up on the north side of Houston. I was 14 years old. <clears throat> when my dad said, you know what? This boy's gonna get in trouble if we don't get him out of here. And, and I come out of Houston kicking and screaming. I didn't want to come here. But it's the best thing my dad ever done. And it's been home since 1971, and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Uh, is there some crazy things going on right now? Yes, there is. Is there some? Is there some things that need to be worked on? Need to be better? Yes, there is. Is, is the party? Uh, is the Republican Party falling apart? No, it's not. We got some people who want to tear it apart, and we got to get that under control. But. Uh, I'm not talking about just the Republican Party. Montgomery County as a whole is a great place. It's the greatest place you could be. And it's going to get better. Nothing but better. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Um, now the commissioner is supposed to respond to constituents how, for sake of here, complaints for constituents' complaints. How do you see it as an issue of third parties putting up fake complaints in order to get what they want? And if so, what would you take to come back that? Well, any kind of complaint that we get, we have to go make sure that there's really a complaint. Uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, social media is uh, it's good and it's bad for politics. I mean, you can get on social media and say anything you want to, and we have to go now and uh, we almost have to defend ourselves just because it was said on social media. So if there's a complaint, uh, and we don't know for sure what it is. We have to go investigate. You know how much time we spend going chasing things that are not true? You know how much time we spend uh, in, commission, in commissioner's court listening to people come up there and saying things that are not true? We waste so much time uh, chasing things that are not relevant at all. Uh, and that's bad for this county. That's bad for any. That's bad for this country. You have to go find out what's real and what's not. You've got to be hands on. You've got to get out on the ground. Uh, what do you say to the people that think the 249 toll road is bad for Montgomery County? They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they don't, they don't, uh, the people that are saying that it's bad for Montgomery County don't live over here. They don't realize what we got. Uh, we've got one, two major roads going through southwest Montgomery County, 1488 and 1774, and they both go right through the middle of Magnolia. If there's a problem on either road, anywhere, the whole southwest side of this county shuts down. 249 is going to relieve so much traffic in the Magnolia area because somewhere around 70% of the people going to Magnolia don't even want to go to Magnolia. They're trying to get around Magnolia. They're trying to go to Plantersville. They're trying to go up north on 1774. They're trying to go to Waller County. But they have to go right through the middle of the worst intersection in the state of Texas, as far as I'm concerned. The six-way stop at 1774 and 1488. This takes all that out. If somebody's trying to get to Waller County, 249, and we get the Magnolia Relief Route built around Magnolia, it, it clears up all the traffic in Magnolia. So anybody that says 249 is bad for Montgomery County, they don't know what they're talking about. The, the development and the commercial and retail and economical development that, that road's going to bring is astronomical. No, what I'd like to say is, is uh, I appreciate y'all doing this. I, you know, uh, Montgomery County needs needs this, and Montgomery County, uh, and I have to be for everybody in Precinct 2. I have to be for everybody in Montgomery County. I can't make decisions just for Precinct 2. Uh, we got some people that, that try to do that. They, they, they think they can make a decision just for their what they're responsible for. They don't realize that I'm responsible for all of Montgomery County. 
Precinct 2 is is my number one priority. But Montgomery County, I'm responsible for every decision that goes on in Montgomery County, and that's how you have to see it. Uh, we got Republicans, we got Democrats, we got Independents, we got liberal, we got we got a we got a variety of everybody. I have to try to represent them all, and I try to do that. I do not shun anybody. Uh, that's part of my job, and that's uh, and I love doing that. I want to continue doing that, and I want to want to I want to serve another term, uh, at least another term. I don't want to quit. I want to keep going. Got too much going on in Montgomery County Precinct Two to stop now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Ron Kecklein, running for uh, Montgomery County Precinct 2 Commissioner. All right. So, as we know, Commissioner position is something that is very in contact with their actual constituents. What are you, are you planning on making anything more transparent than it already is, or how are you going to contact these constituents? It's a good question. Actually, one of the first things I did when I decided to run for Commissioner was I went on the uh, commissioner's website to try to um, review what some of the recent commissioner's court meetings had been like. Um, I know that they happen on Tuesdays at 9 o'clock. I work a 40-hour job, so I, I couldn't come to any of those meetings. But um, I looked for recording of the meetings. Um, I could find the meeting minutes. Uh, the meetings are live streamed. But nowhere could I find any sort of record of the meetings um, in real time that was one of the things that I first thought I needed to change if I'm like a commissioner, is I need to have those meetings available for people, for constituents who can't make the meetings, uh, to look at and review. Because the meeting minutes are extremely abbreviated, yeah, as meeting minutes should be. Um, and it's really hard to get a feel for the back and forth of meetings and what was really discussed just looking at the meeting minutes. And if you don't have the chance to watch the meeting streaming, um, it's really hard to really understand what's going on in the commissioner's court. Um, it's something I still struggle with today to keep informed, um, and I think that's a difficult thing to overcome if we don't have those uh, commissioner's court meetings broadcast or available in somewhere on the website to look at real time. So that's something that I've, from my day one, said I want to fix. Because that transparency is important. That's accountability the constituents and to back and forth. Thank you. Um, how do you feel about the current 249 tollway plan? And if you could or would change anything, uh, what would it be? Uh, tollways, a uh, huge hot button item for a lot of people. Uh, I've been on record saying I, I don't like toll roads personally. Uh, I think they are unfair um, to a lot of people. Um, they disproportionately affect people of limited incomes. Um, and so in a lot of ways, tollways end up being um, a road that's only for the affluent people or to or the people who have to have no other choices. Um, I think our roads should be paid for with tax dollars. Um, they should be open to everybody, um, and that that resource should be something that everyone can enjoy. Um, so I I would like to get rid of toll roads whenever possible. That said, if the voters unanimously approve toll roads as a commissioner, it's my obligation to follow through with that. But I don't like them. I don't propose to have any of them. So you would prefer to increase taxes than uh, get paid for by the by Austin and Credit Toll Road? Well, I don't think we necessarily need to raise taxes to pay for toll roads. I think there are funding sources out there. TechStop, for one, has uh, their own source of funding. But these things don't pay for themselves, honestly. I mean, we all know that the government needs revenue to function. Um, we are paying taxes. I don't know if they're being spent appropriately or the most efficiently. So we may not need to raise taxes to pay for roads if we have tax money and tax revenue available in the system. They just need to reallocate those money appropriately. Thank you. All right. Um, how well do you plan to fact check um, numerous complaints that are brought up to you? Uh, for instance? Um, like, for example, with the 249 one, if someone comes up to you saying how it will be a bad plan to do, to follow through with it, how well, or do you have a plan in place to make sure that it is an actual complaint instead of an independent third party trying to sway your decision? Oh, I get it. So like, if, if I get a public citizen complaint, um, and how do I vet that and verify that it's really true? Um, that's a good question. I don't honestly know uh, how the current court does that. Um, 
I imagine I'd probably have to look to the my fellow commissioners to see to have them advise me. So, what are the normal modes of communication? Um, how do we verify these things? Um, and then look to them to provide some guidance. Um, I certainly hope that my fellow commissioners would, would be working together with me on these things. So I could look to them for answers. But, I know that there certainly are activist groups out there that are you know, working hard to be a loud voice for just a few people. Um, and we need to make sure that we don't over give too much importance to their voice at the expense of everyone else. So, right. Thank you. Um, what would you do to improve mobi mobility and urban planning in the county? Well, um, Clearly, we need to have a plan for growth. Um, Montgomery County is growing, we know that. We need to have a plan in place. The Houston Galveston area um, has a transportation plan. Uh, I think we need to get on board with having a comprehensive plan to identify what areas are growing, how we're going to put infrastructure in place now, and how we're going to plan for 5, 10, 15 years down the road to get people back and forth. Because we have rural areas in Montgomery County that don't have very good roads and services right now. Um, they're struggling with congestion. Um, and I think it really makes it hard for businesses to relocate into our more rural areas off of I-45 if they don't have the infrastructure to support the workers, the resources they need, the raw materials they need, and the finished goods being shipped back out. Um, I think it, it certainly hinders development in the rural areas if we don't have To that end, I, again, I, I think we need to invest in our infrastructure. We can't leave our people behind you know, 40 years ago thinking of us, we have enough roads out here, that's, that's fine. But uh, I really think we need to invest in infrastructure, make sure that we have perfect ways to get people back and forth. Thank you. Um, everyone has specific beliefs that they adhere to and follow. How do you plan on keeping your um, commissioner position non-partisan? Well, primarily since it's a non-legislative position, um, my own personal beliefs really won't be something that comes up in day-to-day -day in the court. And certainly my core values influence who I am as a person, just like all the other commissioners on the court, they have their own core values as well forms their decisions. But ultimately, since we're not really legislating any laws or anything like that, I don't know that it should be a problem at all. Thanks. And really, who I am is, is I, I think it's important that compassion, something that I think it is a core value of who I am, uh, that should probably come across in my dealings with my fellow commissioners. Uh, cooperation is another core thing that I, I grew up believing uh, and taking care of our fellow citizens. So those are hopefully not partisan issues, but they'll certainly be features that I'll be working towards um, every day. Um, as a county commissioner, what is your uh, vision to prevent the next county countywide flood? Or uh, also, what's your action plan to prevent and assist in cleanup of subdivision-like river plantation? It is a huge issue. Um, it's something that we can't really get in front of right now without a comprehensive plan. Um, and what I've said early on, um, I've had cooperation uh, with the Houston Area Research Center, uh, HARC, um, and we're talking to them about some of the flooding issues. And I'm, I'm convinced at this point that we need to look at a um, watershed basin Instead of looking at just what we can do in Montgomery County or even the smaller increasing too, um, if we're going to address flooding issues, we need to look at the whole watershed because we can't divert flood waters just in increasing two or just in Montgomery County and not have it have some sort of an adverse effect either upstream or downstream. Um, and I don't think that's something that we will be able to have any success in doing unless we get cooperation from the other eight other counties that have some sort of touch with the San Jacinto Basin. 
So I really think we need to have a comprehensive plan. Uh, we need to have cooperation with the other counties as well. And we need to start attacking it from a flood basin plan, watershed basin plan. Marseille has no further questions. What is your uh, purpose for running first uh, commission? What's my purpose for running? Good question. Um, all right, so I've got two answers. There, there's the selfish one, and then there's the more public one, right? Um, I'll leave you. I'll leave the second one later because that, that will. That's um, everybody always hears the last thing you say. So the altruistic one, I'll finish with. But my personal reason for running. Um, Honestly, I was pretty upset with how the 2016 election turned out. Um, I'm a Democrat. Um, I think it's important that we treat people fairly and with kindness and compassion. And I really thought leading up to the election that it was a, a pretty much a done deal that a Democratic candidate was going to win. And she had a lot of experience. Uh, I was a very qualified candidate. Uh, I watched the debates and I thought she showed the compassion and poise and experience to be a leader of our country. And so when, when the election turned out the way it did, um, I was pretty devastated as what that meant for the country as a whole. I was really surprised that that was the direction we went. Given those two candidates, that was who was chosen. So partly my run is to give me something to do, an outlet for that that, that those feelings that I have, what what does it mean for everything? You know, I figured I'd sit at home and be mad about it, and get on Facebook and yell at my neighbors, and my relatives or whatever on Facebook, but I wasn't really going to do anything any good. So instead, I chose to, rather than complain about it, do something about it. And so I decided to run for office and see if I can make a difference from within. Um, so that's the personal reason for running. I needed something to do. Um, I thought, why not me? Right? So now the altruistic reason is there's not been a lot of Democrats on the candidate on the slate for a long time. Um, a lot of the current thinking is there's no Democrats in Montgomery County. Montgomery County is a red county. There's no Democrats. We don't vote. Um, and I think the truth is we haven't really had a lot of Democratic options. There's not been a lot of Democrats that have run. And so the election results show Republicans come out to vote. Democrats more often than not vote in Republican primaries because there aren't Democratic primaries. So I think we're underrepresented in the polling numbers. And by running as a Democrat, that gives Democrats a chance to vote for a Democrat. And so I think we'll start to see we have a lot more Democrats that come out and cast votes than we have in prior elections. And so to that regard, what I'm hoping to accomplish is to show that Montgomery County is an open area. It's open for Republicans or Democrats. It's not just a Republican stronghold. Uh, we could potentially have some Democrats in play here. And so that's the other reason why I'm running, is to give more options on the ballot uh, for Democrats and give more Democrats reasons to come out. Because if there's nobody ever on the ballot, there's really no reason to come out and vote. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Is there anything else? Yes. Uh, what do you feel makes you qualify for this specific job? Well, I think a lot of what the commissioner's court does is managing budgets and projects. Um, and I, I'll find out on day one if that's true or not, but that, that's my thought going into it. Um, I have been an environmental professional for 19 years. Um, eight years of that was in consulting, um, federal uh, contracts, uh, private contracts, um, helping to solve our clients' problems. I've been 11-ish, almost 12 years now in the private industry, in the corporate headquarters, in environmental health and safety. And a lot of what I do are manage, manage projects. Um, you define the project, you assign the resources you need to solve the problem, um, and then you see it through to completion and you deliver on time. And I think a lot of those skills are transferable to the commissioner's court and running as a commissioner. Um, 
again, I, I've not had a career in politics, I don't do politics, but I figure why not? You know, I give it a try. Um, I've learned lots of other jobs along the way, uh, things that I didn't know on day one what the job was really going to look like until I got in there. Because um, nobody really can know what the job's going to be until you've had the job for a while. You know? um, so if anybody tells you differently, I think you're their line. You learn as you go along. But um, in 19 years as a professional, um, I've had a lot of challenges and I think I've overcome a lot of those and I've learned. But ultimately it comes down to does this work get done on time and within budget? And my career has shown that I can do that. So um, I'd like to bring more of a science based platform to how we solve our problems. So what does the best science say is a good solution to this problem rather than is this just how we've always done it in the past? Um, I think there's a, a risk in the commissioner's court that is the same people over and over again or the same party over and over again of we will approach the problem with the same set of assumptions we've always had. And I think you end up with a lot of the same results. Um, I think bringing in an outside perspective, um, another party's perspective, brings the opportunity to say, hey, we've got some ideas too, and I think we can make a better overall solution for the county if we look for what's the best idea, what's the freshest ideas. Um, let's, like I said, bring some science to bear on some of these problems with flood mitigation. We can't just try to adjust it, you know, one problem at a time, one flood at a time. It's got to be a more comprehensive thing. So um, hopefully I can have a chance to do some of that. Thank you. Go ahead, Clifton, uh, Vice President for the Young Republicans Club of Magnolia High School. Gunnar Gamble, President of the Young Republicans Club of Magnolia High School. Nika Montalvo, President of the Conroe High Democrat Club. Maddie Lake, Member of the Conroe High Democrat Club. Uh, our Republican nominee is Commissioner Charlie Riley. And the Democrat nominee is Ron Kaifman. Commissioner Riley has been a part of this for many, many years. Many many years. He, in my opinion, probably one of the best men I've ever met. Um, from more recently, Hurricane Harvey, uh, to helping clean up the county from even before, like 2011 when we had the uh, Tri-County wildfires. He was out there with a tractor trying to make fire lines. Uh, 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 so say, I, I love Charlie Riley. You would say he's more interactive. I yeah. love Charlie Riley. God bless Charlie Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, he is not in charge of my precinct, so prefacing that, I'm going to try and say as much as I can it doesn't affect me, it affects more y'all. So Maddie's going to be taking the lead in this discussion. Yeah, I mean, as somebody who was directly affected by Hurricane Harvey um, in a neighborhood that received quite a bit of damage, um, you know, knowing that somebody was out there who was uh, supporting us, you can definitely tell like which candidates are there to help the community and which candidates are there to just be a candidate. Um, I was, I know that like, like I don't, as somebody who was trying to figure out like what was going on during Harvey, post Harvey, I felt like there wasn't as much communications as I was personally like would have pleased for like we found out we were evacuating at four in the morning, we're given three hours to like leave before the floodwaters hit. So I you know, communication I felt like there was it definitely prohibits my like feelings towards him. Um, but at the same time, I didn't see Ron at, I, I never met him with, during cleanup days. He was not there during the weeks of. So for community support, definitely he has my favoritism of, I just, I, I wish there was hope. more Ron, Ron has been more absent. And, and he was emotionally motivated. Yeah, 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 from the 2016 election. He was, he was uh, emotionally motivated because of the outcome. Definitely. 
another, another controversial topic was the, the two for nine toll, which Ron, I believe, said that he does not does like. Not agree with. He, yeah, does, he, does he not wants like no toll, toll roads. No, not one yeah. And Charlie Rowdy is the complete opposite. Yeah. yeah. He, they, they worked uh, very hard to get in what, like, what great deal we got out of, or getting out of 249, and he doesn't really. Uh, that we're living in our area, we won't be impacted. Yeah. Conroe will yeah, not yeah. be impacted yeah. by the G49 right. toll road yeah. uh, in any such way because yeah. that's that way on the side of the Yeah, that, that would definitely be a direct impact on our exactly. lives yeah. since we, we live over there. So looking at the research, it definitely shows what the greater, like, when I was researching over it, like, it will uh, help decrease traffic. Yeah in the area which I know personally traffic is growing in Conroe and I can imagine having that additional road would help. It would definitely, it, it's going to make Montgomery County grow. Yeah, like more, there's going to be so much more money flow into the county for people just passing through and people wanting to come here and live in Montgomery County since. But he did bring up that he did not want to raise taxes yeah. here for the road. He yeah. just said it would take the alternate action. As I think he said, mentioned text dot had alternate ways. <coughs> Ryan mentioned that. Yes, and so I'm I'm I'm, I'm endorsing Charlie Riley. Yes. Uh, God bless Charlie Riley. Um, how do y'all feel? I'm not going to say it was pants again. It doesn't impact me directly, so I will step out of this one. How do you feel? I'm not going to make a decision at this moment. I feel like I would need more time to consider. Just based off the two different interviews, I don't feel like some of the questions I got asked a lot were asked to Commissioner Riley and vice versa. So I would need, before I make a decision, I